Christmas Eve spectacular. Who's excited? Yes, we are. we are excited. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really excited. Uh, Max, how are you feeling? Rough. He's not feeling so good. <laughs> <laughs> we know that Christmas is different this year, but it is certainly not cancelled in this household. And as you can see, we've got various treats here to get us through the service. We've got far more food in this house than we can cope with, haven't we? We certainly have. But we are going to give it our best go to get through it. And Max is helping us. He's helping. He loves popcorn, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> it's Christmas Eve. Listen, kiddies, if you're watching, do not forget your stockings. This is mine. Can you kiddies. see that? Um, kiddies. Yeah, kiddies. Kiddies are watching, I hope. Um, like this is mine. Everybody it's got, has a stocking. It's got a D on there. D for dad, Dean, or dog's body. Absolutely. And I hope you've all got your stockings ready to hang up tonight because it's Christmas Eve. It is Christmas In case you didn't know. Eve. Listen, this service, we have got so much packed in for you. We have got some great Christmas songs for you. We've got some surprise guests. We have got a tail. We're not the only ones with a tail. Look at that. Max has got a tail. And we have got a great message. It's going to be lots of fun, isn't it? It's going to be great fun. So sit down, get a hot chocolate or a Diet Coke, whatever you want. Don't forget to join in with the singing because there's some great songs. And we just want to say actually thank you to everybody who's made this possible. So much hard work has gone on behind the scenes, hasn't it? Absolutely. By loads of different people, especially Lizzie who's put the whole thing together. So thank you from us. Please enjoy. <laughs>
Hi, family church. We miss you all. We wish you a merry and blessed Christmas and happy new year. And happy new year. We love you. Bye. 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 We hope to see you soon. Bye. Hello, everybody at Breakthrough. I hope you're having a really lovely Christmas and enjoying every minute of it. I've missed you so much over the past few months, but it'd be lovely to be able to visit you at some point in the next six months or so. Have a lovely day. Bye. Hello all. It's such a joy to meet with all of you today. We are so thankful to God for his love, protection and faithfulness throughout this year. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year. We miss you all. We love you. God bless you. Hey everyone there. <laughs> Hi everyone at Breakthrough, our wonderful little family. Um, just we wanted to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. We hope you all have a very blessed time. And we wish you a very happy, healthy and safe New Year from the Lucia family. Um, and so say all of us. Merry Christmas! All of us. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hello, everyone at Breakthrough Church. Greetings to you from Ukraine. Thank you all for support and prayers. We really appreciate it. We want to wish all of you a very happy Christmas. You and your families. May this day be very special for all of you. We pray that God will bless you now and in the new year. Thank you very much. Warmest greetings of this festive season and best wishes to happiness uh, this new year. We wish you Christmas joy and blessings wrapped in God's eternal life. For when you rejoice in the gift God gave, fresh hope can reignite. We pray Christ surrounds you with his peace to offer, restore and renew, so the light of his love may fill your heart, revealing Christ one in you. Christmas blessings from your great church holy feelings. Hope you have a great one. It's 20 degrees here, so we're wishing for a white Christmas. It doesn't look like we're going to get one, but uh, I hope that as you reflect on the greatest gift of all, I hope as you reflect on Jesus, uh, that you experience his presence and his hope and his joy in this season. We love you. Have a really good one. Bye. 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 That was good. <laughs> And now it is time to tell you a rhyme, a revised version of a very well-known Christmas poem. Twas the night before Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the town, people were fed up and generally down. The houses were dull and they should have been bright. With no stockings or tinsel or holly in sight. Let's cancel Christmas, said the mayor and his wife. And nobody watch. It's a wonderful life. But Christmas is not something easily crushed. And decisions to cancel should never be rushed. It lives in the hearts of all who hold dear. The meaning of Christmas when God's son drew near. So stop being grumpy and fill up with joy and hear now the story of God's Christmas boy. He told me all about your 
sorrows tell you about it you if you told me you can't fight the battle there's a baby boy who won the war the war was won by a baby boy hallelujah we can sing it time ago, about 2,000 years, Mary and Joseph received lots of cheers. They were pledged to be married and soon to be wed, when an angel appeared to Mary and said, A child is within you, a gift from above. His name will be Jesus, a sign of God's love. When Mary told Joseph about her new bump, he raised up an eyebrow and soon got the hump. He called off the wedding and Mary was sad. But it was not for long that Joseph was mad. An angel appeared to Joseph, you see, and God reassured him. The baby's from me! He rushed off to Mary and told her his dream and they both celebrated with a mince pie and cream. They hung up their stockings and turned off the light. And Santa stopped by at the stroke of midnight. No, no, no. What a load of rubbish. You wrote this. <coughs> oh, I did. <coughs> Let's get back to the story. The couple were married, then quickly appalled, for without any warning, a census was called. Bethlehem was the place that they went. By the time that they got there, they were tired and spent. The place was so busy, no room could be found. When an innkeeper shouted, just bring her around. There's a stable out back where you're welcome to stay. If the baby pops out, he can sleep in the A. The baby was born and laid in a manger, showing God is an awesome, efficient arranger.
the story was started. Some soon did agree. It might be quite nice to put up a tree, and then add the lights, the tinsel and star, wrap up some presents and call up grandma. And soon they felt happy and all warm inside as the spirit of Christmas started turning the tide. They sat by the fire singing carols together and their thoughts turned to shepherds, out braving the weather. Now, out on the hills, looking after their sheep, some shepherds were tired and fighting off sleep, when lo and behold, they saw in the sky a sleigh and some reindeer. Who knew they could fly? Alas, they were dreaming. But now there appeared something they realised they very much feared. The glory of God shone brightly around, and angels sang out with a heavenly sound. Fear not, said the angels, glad tidings we bring. A saviour is born, the king of all kings. In a manger you'll find him, beneath a bright star. Go now and find him, he's not very far. And so they beheld him, the child God sent, and their story was told wherever they went. Shepherds keep their watch 
so grumpy and angry and rude, everyone now was in a Christmassy mood. The turkey was thawing out in the sink, and hot chocolate became the favourite drink. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, with hope that St Nicholas soon would be there. Chocolates and sweets were stuffed in the face, and wrapping up presents became a great race. and some wanted to peep and it soon would be time for them all to sleep. But first we must hear of three men from afar who travelled by camel and followed a star. The star was a sign foretelling a king. They said to each other, what gifts should we bring? Frankincense, myrrh and gold were their choice three royal gifts that made them rejoice. After travelling far, they came to the place where they fell down and worshipped when they looked at God's face.
the stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear Savior's birth long lay the world in sin and repining till he soul felt its worth, a thrill of hope, the weary soul rejoices for yonder face, a new and glorious morn, oh for Praise his hope. 
Just as these wise men worshipped God's Son, we should remember all he has done. He was born in a stable, but died for us all. I wonder this Christmas if you hear his call. On Christmas morn, as you unwrap your presents, think of God's gift and make room for his presence, his gift, life eternal to all who believe. What must we do? Repent and believe. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed our Christmas Eve online service, and I really want to thank you all for joining us um, today. Uh, we've certainly had a lot of fun making this and putting, putting it together. And um, so, as I say, I really hope you've enjoyed it. And before we wrap it all up, I just want to share a few thoughts with you. Um, let me read a well-known scripture that's often read this time of year. It comes from Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. It says this, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It's a prophecy of the birth of Jesus with a, a real message of hope for the world. And as we consider this verse, I wonder if, you've, if it's ever struck you how it says that a child is given to us how a son is born to us. And when a baby is born, um, that's not the sort of thing you'd normally say. You, you'd say the, parent, the, the, the child was given to the parents, the, um, the son was given to the parents. You wouldn't lay claim to it yourself. So it's a little bit strange. Nevertheless, this verse, speaking ahead of the event, tells us that this child was born for us, for you, for me. It was he was born for us. What a wonderful gift, an absolutely wonderful gift. The verse goes on to express some of the titles that are, that are attributed to the baby. Um, the, the titles that would be attributed to him, that were attributed to, and they are now. They express his care and love for us as someone that, that we can run to for advice, wonderful counsellor. They unequivocally speak of his divine nature demonstrated through the powerful works that he did on earth, mighty God. They speak of his paternal nature, nurturing and protecting us, extending through all ages and all generations, eternal father. They speak of royalty and the security and protection that he can bring to all who trust in him, no matter what trials are being faced. Prince of Peace. You know, Jesus lived up to all of these names and more. One of the meanings of the word counsellor is teacher. Someone that we can learn from and go to for wise counsel. And in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 8, Jesus said the following to his disciples. And he said this just after he criticised the Pharisees who absolutely loved to be called rabbi or teacher. So he says to his disciples, but you are not to be called rabbi for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. I often think of this verse when people call me uh, pastor. I mean, no, I know some of you do that as a mark of respect, and I understand that, and I appreciate that. But you know, the words pastor or teacher, they should be used to describe what a person does. They're not really titles, and shouldn't be used that way, um, really, because they can so often lead to pride. You know, this is my label, my title. In fact, they're functional. It should describe what a person does. Jesus today remains really our only teacher. And he does that. He continues to teach us and he continues to advise us. He continues to give us counsel through the work of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is sent to lead us into all truth. And you can read that in John chapter 16 and verse 13. Jesus is our wonderful counsellor. What about mighty God? Do you know when a paralysed man was brought to Jesus by some of his friends, Jesus said to the man who was laying on a bed, couldn't move, he said, son, 
your sins are forgiven. He said that in Mark chapter 2 and verse 5. <clears throat> Some teachers of the law were present when he said that and they, they thought to themselves, they didn't say it, they thought to themselves, he's a blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God? But Jesus knew their thoughts and he said to them, I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And after he had said that, after he'd done that, he healed the paralyzed man who got up, walked away, praising God. Can you imagine that? The man was paralyzed. He was healed. He got up, walked away, praising God. So Jesus demonstrated that he was mighty and that he was God. In other words, he, he, he absolutely um, showed that he had the authority on earth to forgive sins. And the teacher of the Lord would acknowledge only God can do that. So he's mighty God. <clears throat> what about eternal father? Do you know that in John chapter 14 and verse 18, at the last supper, again, something that Jesus said to his disciples, I will not leave you as what? Orphans. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you before too long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. And this shows the paternal nature of Jesus's relationship with his disciples. He was like a father to them and he reassured them that though he would have to go, he would return. As a father, he would not abandon his children. Um, sorry, as a father would not abandon his children, so he would not abandon them. He would not leave them as orphans. In this verse, he was also spoke of his resurrection, because I will live. And he told them that his resurrection would be the guarantee that they too would not be defeated by death, but would be raised to life with him for eternity. In that sense, then, he is our eternal father. Not that we should confuse that with his position in the Trinity as the son of God, but that we can be assured of his paternal role in our lives for eternity. We will never be orphans as long as we belong to him. <clears throat> Finally then, Prince of Peace. At that last supper, Jesus also said to his disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And how much we need that assurance and that message today. This peace that Jesus gives, it passes all understanding. That's what it says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. But it is very, very real. If you read through the book of Acts, you will see the fearless way that the early church proclaimed the good news of the gospel in the face of fierce opposition, persecution, and death in many cases. They were able to do this because of the unshakable peace that comes from having faith in Jesus. In our uncertain and troubled world, this peace is not elusive, it's not unobtainable, it is readily available to all who will put their trust in Jesus. There is a prince of this world, and that's the devil but we don't need to fear him at all when we place ourselves into the hands of a prince who is far greater, the Prince of Peace, Jesus. And so this Christmas, I wonder who Jesus is to you. Do you know him? Do you know that he loves you so much that he died on a cross for you so that your sins might be forgiven? You might be brought into a right relationship with God and receive the promise of eternal life in his kingdom. Whoever you are, I guarantee you that there is no one in your life who loves you as much as Jesus does, or who will stand by you no matter what. This Christmas, if you don't know him, why don't you take that step? And you might say, well, how on earth do I get to know him? I can't see him, I can't pick up the phone and speak to him, I can't text him, so how do I get to know him? And, you know, the Bible tells us that God is spirit. He is the invisible God. So we cannot expect to know him in the way that we know other people through our physical senses. <clears throat> we can only relate to God spirit to spirit. Our problem is that because we are sinners, we are spiritually dead, which means that we are cut off from God. That is the world's problem today. Sin, it cuts us off from God. In fact, that's always been the world's problem, which is why God the Father 
sent Jesus, God the Son, into the world so that it could be saved. <clears throat> when the angel told Mary that she was going to give birth to God's Son, he told her that she had to name the baby Jesus. She was told what name to give him, and he, he, the angel told her to give him that name because the name means the Lord saves. And the angel explained that Jesus had come to save people from sin. <clears throat> and you might ask, well, how on earth did Jesus save us from sin? He did it through the cross. Jesus himself lived a life without sin. I want you to just imagine that. He never did anything wrong, not in thought, word, or deed. That itself is a miracle. He was innocent, the only person who ever lived who has been completely innocent. That meant that he died in our place as a substitute, the innocent for the guilty. He took our punishment. And the Bible tells us that his one sacrifice was enough to pay the price for sin for all people through all of time. That means he paid the price for your sin and for mine. <clears throat> so what do I have to do, I hear you say? If Jesus paid the price, isn't my sin and everybody else's dealt with? <clears throat> well, let me try to give you an illustration. Suppose I have a car and I decide to drive it on the road, but just to ignore the rules. Suppose I just drive through red lights, don't stop at a zebra crossing and ignore all the speed limits. What's going to happen is that pretty soon a policeman will stop me. And suppose the first time that I get stopped, I get a, a lenient policeman who lets me off, but warns me not to do it again. Now, if I don't change my ways and I continue ignore, to ignore the rules that, and that policeman catches me again, what's going to happen? Well, he's not going to let me off again, because if he does, I'm just going to be a danger to other people and to myself. And although the illustration is not perfect, God's forgiveness is a little bit like that. You see, God has paid the price for our sin so that we can be forgiven. But to receive that forgiveness, we have got to commit to change. <clears throat> We've got to acknowledge our sin, say sorry for it, and then commit to turn away from sin in the future. That's called repentance. Repent and be baptized and you will be saved. That is the promise in the Bible. You see, sin is so much more destructive to ourselves and to society in general than someone who does not obey the highway code. We have to be honest and recognize it and then turn from it if we want God's forgiveness. Does that mean that we have to be perfect? Of course not. God is looking at our hearts. He is looking for genuine remorse with regard to sin and a genuine desire to be free from it. He does not expect us to be free from it instantly, but begins a process of setting us free as soon as we commit ourselves to him. That still doesn't help too much if we can't communicate with God because he is spirit and we're spiritually dead. But you know, that's one of the beautiful things that we can read in the Bible. See, Jesus went to a man uh, called Nicodemus. In fact, Nicode Nicodemus came to Jesus asking him questions. And, uh, and Jesus told Nicodemus that no one could enter the kingdom of heaven unless they were born again, where he was talking about a spiritual birth, not a natural birth. When we commit our lives to Jesus, the spirit within us, which was dead, is now brought to life. And Romans chapter 8 and verse 16 says this, the Spirit himself, that's the Holy Spirit, testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. That was my own experience when I first gave my life to Jesus on the 15th of November, 1985. It was a strange, unexpected, but genuinely wonderful experience to know God's presence for the very first time. I knew that I belonged to him, and this verse best explains how I knew that. The Holy Spirit testified to my newly born spirit that I was his child. And that can be your experience too, right now. If you recognize that you are a sinner, that you have lived life your own way rather than God's way, and you're ready to say sorry to God and to ask for his forgiveness because of the cross, 
then I wonder if you would pray with me right now. If you're ready to turn from sin and to start living God's way with the help of the Holy Spirit, then please just repeat this prayer after me. So just let's just take a moment and right where you are, if you're ready to say this prayer, just close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I come before you now. I acknowledge my sin. I ask for your forgiveness on the basis of the cross, on the basis of the blood of Jesus. I ask for your forgiveness. I commit my life to you and with your help, I commit myself right now to live your way and not my way. Come into my life right now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, then can I encourage you, tell somebody, tell somebody. Most importantly, find a church near you where other people can help you in your new walk with Jesus. If you would like us here at Breakthrough Church to help you, then please let us know. An email address will be coming up on your screen. Contact us through that email address and somebody will be in touch to help you. Do you know, God wants to place you in his family, which is the church. He never intended us um, he never intended for us to be isolated, but to be connected in his family and to play our part within it. There is nothing to be afraid of. Um, and I promise you that we are here to help you and to share God's love with you, not to put pressure on you, but genuinely to help you and to share God's love with you. Please, if you played, prayed that prayer, get in touch with us. We would love to help you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. We pray God's blessing on you now. Thank you so much. So we hope that you have enjoyed the service. And as we come to the close, let's remember that the, the real message of Christmas is God's gift to us, uh, Jesus. So let's try to keep him at the very center of that. And uh, we really, really hope that you have a fabulous Christmas. And uh, we are just going to close with a real time of celebration, uh, a fantastic song we've got lined up for you. It's called Born is the King. Born unto us this day a savior gifted from heaven to a manger the hope of the world a light for all mankind all of the earth rejoice it's christmas time so lift up your voice and sing out his praise it's christmas born is the king Rejoice in the day, it's Christmas, make a joyful noise, it's Christmas, make his praise resound, it's Christmas. It's Christmas time, it's Christmas time So lift up your voice and sing out his praise It's Christmas, born is the King, rejoice in the day It's Christmas, 
make a joyful sound. It's Christmas, let his place resound. It's Christmas, lift up your voice and sing out his praise. It's Christmas, born to the king, rejoice in the day. It's Christmas, make a joyful sound. It's Christmas, let his praise resound. It's Christmas, do 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 of our service we hope you've really enjoyed it it's been such fun and it's been a pleasure to be with you all we'd just like to say thank you to all of those people around the world who have sent in their messages hope you've really enjoyed seeing all our old friends as well as new friends max has had enough he's gone off to go to bed to hang his stocking up he's very excited but we are ready to party Oh, no, we've got to go to bed, haven't we? Yeah, bed, 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 bed. <laughs> so enjoy your Christmas. Have a fabulous time. And we are really looking forward to all that God has got for us in the new year. Um, we, there might be various restrictions. The pandemic might have made things difficult for us. But we can still remain thankful and celebrate the goodness of God. So have a great Christmas and a great new year. Yeah, happy Christmas. Bye-bye.